you are welcome back to the road fa the rock fashion and beauty today i'll be teaching on how to cut this beautiful caribbean gown but before i start i would like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers please if you are just coming in contact with this channel don't forget to watch to the end like subscribe good day viewers we are welcome back to the rock stitches today i'll be sewing the gown that is that you are looking on the screen, I would like to make the analysis of the gown. As we are looking at it, it is divided into the upper part and the lower part. The upper part has two layers, the upper layer and the lower layer, while the upper part has just a single layer. So I hope that you will have much to gain by the end of the video. Please watch to the end. Thank you so much. I also thank my subscriber. If you are coming across this channel for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe press the red button so that notification will be sent to you anytime I upload. Thank you very much. Thank you for viewing. Stay blessed as a few. Let's get to work. So to start with, I've cut out my lower panel as you can see. This is actually for the top. Uh, the waist I'm working with is 36. So for the waist, I multiply the waist by one and have 1.5 inches. It's the same thing as one and a half inches. 35 multiplied by 1.5 gives us 20, um, 54. So I've cut out my 54. As we can see, this is in fold. Everything we have here is 54 plus the seam allowance. Three inches seam allowance. So everything amounts to 54 plus three, that's 57. I'm having 28.5 inches in fold multiplied by two. will give me 27 if I open it up. If I open it up like this, it will give me 27 or two. Then for the length, the first panel will be stopping below the nail so i'm cutting 22 inches for that 22 inches so what i'm having for the upper panel of the gown of the lower part of the gown is 54 by 22 inches so i'll just put that down then for the second panel the one at the extreme end i multiplied the upper panel which is 54 by 1.5 as well and it gives me 81 54 multiplied by 1.5 gives me 81 so i just add some inches so that i don't have i'm adding some piece of leftover in my clothes then i don't want the lower part to be too full so i just add some inches to it so what i'm having here is 90 inches 90 inches for the length then for the height or the width i'm having 18 inches plus the same allowance. The lower part of the gown will be 38. So plus the same allowance, I'm having 18 inches. And by the time you add 18 inches to the 22 inches that I cut for the upper part, you'll be having 40 inches. The two allowance will serve as my same allowance for joining the upper part to the blouse, then joining this to the upper part, then the uh, sewing the hedge. That will be using two inches for all that. So after I've cut out the lower part, now I'm going to the dealing, I'm going to be dealing with the upper part. But if you care to know, I'm using four yards of Ankara material. I'm cutting everything out from four yards of Ankara material. So the next thing now is to cut out the back of my clients. And the back, the up the back, yes, the back panel. That is what I want to cut out now. So and in order to get back, I'm going to fold my clothes with the widest part of the upper bodies. The widest back part, as we always know, is the bust. So I'm going to take first my seam allowance. I'm taking one and half for the seam allowance because it's going to have lining. So I'm going to use half inch to turn the lining in. Then after that, the bust is 40 inches divided by four. I have 10. Then for the zipper allowance also, I'm going to be taking one and half. So I just adjust my cloth. So after that, then I rule out my zipper allowance first. After ruling out the zipper allowance, so the next thing is I'm going to rule out the borderline for the upper part. Then the length of my blouse, the length of the upper part, that is from shoulder to the waist. I'm having 17 inches. And this is back. 
the back panel is usually shorter than the front panel because of the bust. We have the bust at the front. So the back panel is usually shorter than the front panel. So I'm going to come up by one and half because I'm cutting directly on the fabrics. And since I'm not taking out any side, any bust that, so I'll be moving up by one and a half and I will rule. So the length of my back, instead of 17, will be 17 inches minus one and a half. And that is 15.5 inches. I hope you get that. Then I'll mark out my shoulder to shoulder, which is eight inches. You see, the shoulder to shoulder is 16 inches divided by two. I have each eight inches. I'll move down by three quarter of an inch. Then mark down my eight inches. For the armhole depth, I'm going to be using eight inches plus half inch for sewing allowance. That is 8.5 and I will be drawing a straight line from this point where I have the, where I mark the three, uh, one in three quarter of an inch, that is 0.75 inches from there, I'll be marking down my shoulder depth. Then for the neckline, the width of my neckline will be four inches. So, and the four inches, I'll be marking out four inches, then I'll be joining it to the shoulder line which gives me the shoulder slope so you can see that i've gotten my shoulder slope then for the neckline depth at the back i don't want something too deep so i'll be taking three inches and with that i'll be using the cuff ruler to mark out the neckline now to that i can at least mark out my shoulder line and for that i'll be getting the half i'm having from here to here is eight and a half half of eight and a half is 4.25 so i mark on that 4.25 at that 4.25 i will come in by a quarter of an inch at the back so and i'm going to take my shoulder line at that point and my shoulder measurement that is the shoulder circumference that is 40 divided by two by four i'm having 10 so i mark on the 10 then the remaining will be my seam allowance. So from this point, I'll be drawing a curve to join this point to this point. That is the shoulder, the bust circumference to the allowance, to the points that I make here at the shoulder line. So I'm having three points now, the shoulder line, the middle point, and the bust line. So I'm joining the three lines together to get my arm or curve. So now I have gotten my back arm or curve. Then the next thing now is to draw out my waist circumference. And for the waist, I have 36. The client that holds the clothes is 36. The waist I'm using is 36. So 36 divided by four, that is nine. I'm going to draw out the nine. Then one inch for the dart allowance. Then the remaining we serve as my same allowance. So my back is ready for cutting now at this point. So I just take my scissors and cut it out. Now I have cut out the back panel and I'll split this into two. So the next thing is I'll put this aside to cut the front panel. So now I've folded my clothes for the front panel. And now to get my the measurement for my folding for the front panel, I'm taking four inches allowance, then measurement for the bust, which is 10. And everything I'm having here is 14 inches. So I folded just half. It's better to have as an excess than shortage. So after that, I will take the length of my upper part, the length of the blouse upper part is 17. So I'm taking the border at 17. Yes, after taking 17, I've taken the length, which is 17. After that, the next thing now is just to draw out my shoulder line. The shoulder to shoulder is seven. Then for the shoulder slope, I go down by 3.5, just the same way I do for the back. Then here I'll be taking four inches. For the neckline, I'll be taking four inches and I'll draw out, then I'll mark eight to draw out the shoulder depth. The shoulder depth is eight and a half. I'll mark that also. Then I'll mark the straight line. And draw out my shoulder slope. 
Then for the front, the depth is 5 inches. The neck depth for the front is 5 inches. So I'm going to draw out my cuff. And even at this point, you can take any neckline design that you want. But I just want a round neckline. Then the next thing now, I'll mark out the bust. That is 10 inches. I'll mark out the center of the arm object, four and a half. Then come in by three point, come in by three quarter of an inch, 0.75 inches. Then join the three points together with my curve ruler. Then at this point, the next thing is to check take the nipple to nipple point. That is 4.5. The nipple to nipple is 4 plus half inch to join it because I'm, cut, I'm cutting directly on the fabric. So I have 4.5. Then for the nipple point, I have 10 and half. So I'm going down by 10 and half. And here I'm taking the normal gas, which is half inches. It's not a breast cut, so I'm just taking half an inch. And I will use my ruler to join it to the boss point. But it should be, it is having ample gas. It's an ample gas design. So the next thing now, here, which is half of the hand pole depth, I will be going up, not the inner line, the outer line now. On the outer line, I will be going up the outer line by one inch, here. Then at the middle line, I will be going down by half an inch. I will mark that point. Now I'll place my hand pole ladder switch. The side panel, my panel has been divided. This is the center panel and this is the side panel. For the side panel, I will be joining this that way, that point to the lower line. The lower mark I make on the center of the handhold depth. So I'll be joining these points to the lower one, while the center line point I'll be joining to the upper one. So I'll just place my ruler in a way that it blends. Then I'll place my ruler again, then join. And here, this line, this allowance that I move here, I'm going to add it to this place. So here, I'm having two inches. I'm going to add the two inches for an extension here. I'll be joining it, drawing a parallel line to the curve. Now, the next thing is to cut it out. Here yeah, I'm having 10. I'm taking 3 inches, same allowance here. Here also, I'm having 9. I will be adding 4 inches, same allowance. Because of the data and design. So just follow the width. So for this front line, I'm going to come in. I'm having two lines here. If you can see it very well. Let me try to move my camera. I'm having this line and the outer line. So I'll be cutting on the inner line. I'll be cutting this way, like so, down.
I've got out the center panel. Then for the side panel, I'm going to be cutting this way. This is what I'm having at the end of the day. I'm having my side. Sorry, I've not cut out the dots. So I will be cutting out the dots like so. So now this is what I'm having. So I will join it. And by the time I join this piece, the SSA, I will cut it to blend with the arm odet. So the next thing now is to cut out the lining. And after cutting out the lining, I'll be working on this panel. Now for the design on this panel. This is the right side and this is the wrong side. On this wrong side, I'm going to be cutting and it, the very soft interfacing on it. So I'm going to be attaching the very soft inter interfacing on it. So that by the time I start sewing on it, it will not squeeze together. Then, here I'm going to be coming up by one and a half inches to provide space for joining it to the lower part. So that by the time I'm joining it to the lower part, it will not affect my design. So I'll be coming up by one and a half inches. I'll root the line. Then the next thing is, I will come in I'll, at this side. I will have, I will move up by one inches. Then on this side also I move up by one inches and I will try to get the locate the center of this line that I'm having here. So I can just put my measuring tape this way to get the center. This is the center. I'll mark on the center. So the next thing is I'll be joining a curved line like so. Let me see if my hand holder will be able to give me that. After that, I will just keep taking one inch and I will draw a parallel line to this curve. I will take another one inch up on three sides. And draw a parallel line again. And that is what I will do until I get to this place. So after drawing the lines, this is what I'm having. So I'll draw it to the shoulder. So the nice thing is, I saw this rope in the market. I don't even know the name of the buyer's enemies. But I'll be using it to embellish it. So one after the other, I'll just be sewing the bias on the line, on the line. So I'll first sew it on the line, then take the middle of the line, sew it, sew it on the line. Take the middle of the line, sew it, and by the time I'm done with that, I will be showing us the outcome. So for the other panels, I've cut out the lining, as you can see, and for the lower part, I only cut out lining for the upper part. So I'll be taking this to the machine and sewing the lining. I will use the lining to turn the neckline. Put the lining right side on the right side of the Ankara fabrics. So this is the right side of the Ankara fabrics. I will put the lining. Let me take this way. I will put the lining this way and sew it round. Then turn it and top stitch. And after sewing the Chinese rope. It was later I heard that the bias was called Chinese rope. So after sewing it on the Ankara 
front panel this is what i'm having you can see how beautiful it is so then the same way i will put this and sew it round if you want to know how i sew it you can just put it on the in the comment box so if you want the video i can do a separate video on how to sew this chinese thread to ankara so you can do that so i did not do it now because i don't want the video to be too long so i'm just going to take this to the machine and sew round so with this i'm through with the top i've joined it so the next thing is i'm going to cut the sleeve then for the lower part i'll be pulling i've run a loose stitch along the head of this i've overlocked it if you can see as you can see and i've run a loose stitch then after that after running the loose stitch i folded this way i notch the needle i notch the middle this middle i put a notch there like so then i folded again making it four parts so and i will notch this place i now have at this edge at this fold i have one two three four and i will also notch the center here so after that i'm going to pull the gather i'm going to pull the thread to gather heat so i'll be pulling the thread the normal way we used to do gather i had a video i'm having a video on gathers you can just go and look at the video let's watch it so i'm not going to do this on, in this video i'll just go and do the remaining off camera then the same way at this on this other one i only run the gathers along the side that i'm going to join to the upper part then this lower side i only overlock without putting gathers without running stitch so this other start side where i did not run any stitch i'm also going to fold like this notch the middle here and fold the other way and notch the middle as well where i have the four fold one two three four i will also notch the middle so after notching like so so after i pull the gather this is the right side after i'm done with pulling the gathers i'm going to turn the right side to the right side the right side to the right side and align the notches the center notch of this to the center notch of this so then the side notch to the side notch like so then this side notch here to the side notch here like so so i'm going to pull the gather to allow it all this excess fit into this one and i'm going to sew it down then i run the gather i will I also pull the gather along this line and join it to the stop then i will join our sleeve and the gown is ready